Hopefully this will all work, Marcelo. <laughs> it's going, I'm taking the sound off of the phone. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. So it looks like we are, we're live on Instagram and Facebook now. Cool. Hello everyone, it's good to be back and today we are starting uh, live with this very special guest, my friend Marcelo Antonelli, he's at, at the United States now and it's the, fr it's Friday, five o'clock, is that Marcelo? Correct. <laughs> So I just wanted to say hi to everyone uh, on Instagram and Facebook watching us. Uh, today is going to be very special. We're going to be talking about um, a lot of things related to, to football or soccer, how they call it in the US, <laughs> and, and futsal too. So Marcelo, thank you for accepting the invitation. And um, I hope we can discuss some really important things here and that can we can contribute to our viewers in, in some way. Thank you for the invite. I'm really glad to be here and to have this opportunity. You're, well, you're most welcome. Marcelo, how, how about we start with um, a little bit of an introduction of who you are, uh, what you do, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, your experience with um, as a player, as a coach, and so people get to know you here in Australia too. Um, I was born and raised in Brazil. I was playing futsal and soccer there until I was uh, in college. After college, I started to work with both sports. I was in college to be a, a coach, studying physical education at Unicamp. Um, so grew up with both sports, graduated, worked for a year in a, in a youth professional club. Mm -hmm. And after that, um, I decided I was too young that I still want to play. So I went to Italy, where I played futsal there for uh, six years. And then after Italy, I already had this plan kind of set up that I would come here to America uh, and coach here in the United States. Okay. So you, um, you, you lived in Brazil for half of your life? <laughs> would you say that? Actually, it's pretty much exactly that because let's see, I left in 2001. So I was, I was 20. Hold on, it counts now. <laughs> 25. So a little bit more than half in Brazil and basically half now splitting between Europe and America. Mm. So you had your studies done there at Unicamp in, in Campinas. That's the countryside of Sao Paulo State. Correct. And then and then you did your master's degree? Was that in the US? Yes, in the US. So many people, you know, you know, in order to start here, you kind of need to come with a student visa. Mm. So I was a part-time coach at the university while I was um, getting my degree in education. Mm -hmm. So my first two years I was coaching. I mean, they say part-time, but in practice, like, you're working full-time there. Yeah. I, in exchange, I was getting my master's, so I got a master's in education there. Okay, that's great. And, and Marcelo, how did um, the opportunity come about for you to go from Brazil to, to Italy to, to play futsal? Well, actually, I'd say I created the opportunity in terms of there was not really people coming after me. I did not use an agent or anything. I grew up playing futsal and some guys that played against me or with me went there to play. So I had some contacts. I contacted some people there. They kind of gave me an idea of how I could do this. But honestly, I went to myself, like I wrote the message in English, translate to Italian, contact a few clubs. So I basically created my opportunity to get a tryout there. And mm -hmm. then uh, it was interesting. I never actually talked about that in a scenario like this, but my first thing, uh, you know, I, I try out for a couple of days with them. I was all the way south of Italy. So I got to train all the way to the south in Calabria. And then um, I was trying out. So they liked me the first days. They brought me to the to their preseason. Uh -huh. And that was like in Reggio Calabria in Italy. 
just close to Sicily. And then it um, was a really beautiful place. So like we were practicing like for three or four days and that was more or less, it was kind of out of shape because before going to Italy, after Brazil, I went to America, I was coaching some camps here. So um, I was not in the best of my shape. So in the third day, the coach came to me in Italian, he could not speak much English and saying, hey, that's what I understood. I kind of like you, but I'm hiring the goalkeeper from the national team. Uh, and they already have a second and a third goalkeeper. So I'm not going to fire them. So I cannot stay with you. And I was like, okay. I thought it was a lie at the time. Mm. Uh, but then I ended up figuring out that that was true. Um, I ended up getting the place of this goalkeeper in another team later on when the other goalkeeper was getting older. And I got his place like five, six years after. Um, but anyway, so this coach really liked me, but he could not stay with me. So then he gave me my contact for an agent there. And then I ended up figuring out another team. Okay. So that's nice. So you created the opportunity. Uh, nothing just happened. There wasn't an invitation. You, you went and looked for it and prepared yourself for it. That's, that's really good. Well, I guess that's the mentality of most people in Brazil, right? Uh, you know, like you're a player, the agent has to do everything. They control your life. They control your destiny. And probably it's not the best mentality to have. I think if you're able to take ownership on your career, on your opportunities, it's way better than relying on other people to make decisions for you. Yeah. How, how do you compare, Marcelo? I think that's, um, that's a fair a question that a lot of people... In Brazil, a lot of people that love futsal, futsal in Brazil, that they um, they ask, you know, how does Brazil compare um, with Italy, with Spain, in terms of um, the level of professionalism of in running futsal and and, and all that's involved? How how do you see it? Well, I mean, you're comparing three countries that have professional leagues, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I it's hard to compare between Brazil and Spain right now. I mean, Brazil has more clubs, it's a bigger country. You know, the youth system is so strong, but Spain is so organized, it's traditional. Um, it's hard to compare, I don't know. I don't know how to say which one is stronger. I think Italy is one degree below those two. Mm -hmm. um, still above most of other countries around the globe in terms of futsal, mm -hmm. but one degree below Brazil and Spain, especially if you're talking about producing players. Italy does not produce as many players as Brazil or Spain in futsal. So mm -hmm. what they do, they hire a lot of people. You have like hundreds of Brazilians, what they call uh, italo Brazilian, right? The Brazilian Italians, just like me, that have a citizenship, Italian citizenship. So we don't count official as a foreigner. So yeah. I played on a team at some point, like we had like 80 Brazilians, but just <laughs> one was counting as a foreigner because everybody else it was like especially guys from Paraná mm. that had Italian citizenship. So they grew up with a strong futsal system in Brazil and they had their ancestors coming from Italy and migrating to Brazil. Yes, yes. And, and there was also, I don't know um, exactly when you were there, but there was a time that you, you probably will remember that the Italian national team was almost being called Brazil B. <laughs> There's so many dual citizens. Was that when you were there or not? Um, when I was there, I guess it was two or three, just they were not really um, Brazilians. I don't know if it was in Argentina at the time, but I guess, yes. I guess most of the time, most of the team in Italy was made by Brazilians in the best decades. Mm -hmm. And there were some generations where there were more Italians, but still mostly are Brazilians. Okay. Okay, and um, so from from Italy, Marcelo, you 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 came back to Brazil, or did you go straight to the United States, and how it all began? So in Brazil, uh, when I was in college, I was coaching Guarani. Um, I was coaching the girls for soccer and futsal. Camila was in the chat, and I'm not sure if she's still watching or not. But Camila <laughs> was my player at Guarani. And her and so many other girls started a career at Guarani, playing soccer and futsal, mm -hmm. and uh, end up playing college soccer in America. Mm -hmm. And many of them stayed there, coaches, 
some playing professional, some international team, some found other professions. Anyway, I was pretty used to the, to the system in terms of understanding that, you know, there are opportunities in America for people to come and, and, and play soccer while studying college or for coaches, you know, to try to get a master's while you're coaching or different opportunities. Uh -huh. So basically, I, and I had a degree in physical education by the time I was in Italy playing. So I had that in mind, you know, like when you're also done uh, playing, I'm going to go to America. So what happened is this. In March, I was in Sicily. You know, the gym was completely full when someone just hit my knee. I tore my PCL. I was 31. And then the doctor saying, you know, it's going to take like over a year if you have a surgery to come back. Wow. So at that point, I already had the mind, okay, I want to be a coach one day. Or I want to go back to be a coach because I was coaching before. So I decided, okay, I'm done. So while I was there in my last month and I knew I would be done, I started to contact colleges in America, uh, trying to get an opportunity there. I also created my opportunity in America. Again, again you created the opportunity. Yeah, I, I knew some Brazilians. I have some friends in here. Ended up not working out with them. So I applied some other jobs. So it was funny. Like answering your question, I came back from Italy to Brazil. In two days, I was in Brazil. <laughs> from a coach in America, and I could barely understand her, you know, between the phone call and my English level, I basically did not understand anything in the call. <laughs> so actually, when we hang up, I went to Google who she was, and I sent an email apologizing for my English. Anyway, uh -huh. after that, we had some video, you know, some Skype calls yeah. with other people in the department. So I stayed in Brazil probably like for a month between Italy and the United States, and that was it. Wow. So, um, okay, so that's when, so what year was that when you moved to the U.S.? Uh, 2006. 2006. And, um, and I'm, I'm sorry, I played 2006, 2007, 2007. 2007. So when you got there, so your first goal was to, to then start, continue your studies, to do your master's while coaching part-time, is that correct? I mean, my ultimate goal was to, to, to be a coach in the yeah. college system. Mm -hmm. So you use the way it works, you know, like you use those first three years. Of course, to get an education, to get better, to learn, to improve your English. Yeah. But the goal was to, to eventually get hired full time in a school. Mm -hmm. uh, what ended up happening is that they liked me there. So they ended up hiring me. So my position, I was part time, became full time. Full time. So I ended up staying at school for eight years. Very good. And it was always... Um always at the same place in the US. So you, where are you based at the moment? So that school was in Pennsylvania, was St. Francis University in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I got an, a, a job offer to come to California. So mm -hmm. I came to coach at UC Davis here in California. So I live in Sacramento, California. Mm -hmm. But then when my daughter was born two years ago, I decided to leave college coach a little bit and to work on soccer power by futsal. Because I thought that could be my, my biggest contribution for this country in terms of developing methodology and helping coaches to find a different ways to develop their players. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, now, for uh, at the moment, Marcelo, uh, what, what are your current projects? If you wanted to, if you'd like to share that with us, do you, do you currently coach any teams? Do you have any academies for either futsal or soccer? Uh, what sort of programs do you run there? Is it at a university or do, does soccer power by futsal has its own program separately? How does it work? So soccer power by futsal, let's say, is an idea that became a book that explains the methodology. And then from this, we create all the websites or the social media we have. And basis is a methodological base that you can work on. So mm -hmm. I have now people in different parts of the United States asking me, hey, can you use this methodology here? How can I make a partnership? So Soccer Power by Futsal is not meant to be something in one specific place. It's an idea, it's a methodology. It wants to support futsal coaches and soccer coaches anywhere around the globe. Now, myself, Marcelo, I coach at the local club. Yeah. So I have two teams, two U16 teams. Uh, it's a, it's a Union Sacramento FC. That's my local club, soccer club. Mm -hmm. I also do the futsal for them. And I'm also the director of methodology for a different club, Atletico FC. Um, 
And then if both clubs end up making kind of partnerships between soccer, power of futsal and those clubs. So with Union FC, uh, part of the partnerships, like they agree for me to be using my methodology and filming it and using, having the rights for those images to make some videos that you can find on my channel on the Soccer Power by Futsal on YouTube. And that they show the integration of training between soccer and futsal. Nice, nice. Marcelo, I just want to test something. Um, it feels like uh, I can still hear you talking after you talk. Um, would that, would that, if you just put like uh, your headphones, your earphones, would it make any better, do you think? Uh, let me see if my phone still has sound. Tell me if you still can hear that or not. All right, let's, let's say something. Can you hear me? Do you hear echo or not? I can still, I can still hear an echo. Okay, give me a second. Just, just wanted to, um, to try that. So for who doesn't know, like we are filming both on Instagram, but we're also on Facebook or YouTube, right? Yes, yes. So you uh, um, computer and the phone at the same time. While Marcelo's getting ready there, guys, uh, um, apologies if, you know, we're not looking all the time directly at the camera. <laughs> We've got two devices going on. So we're trying to um, to expand our, our reach for, for both platforms, Facebook and also Instagram. Uh, for those joining now, my name is Henan Fenrick and I'm the head coach of North Coast Futsal in Australia. Um, and I'm having the pleasure to, to talk to Marcelo Antonelli, the author of the book, Soccer Power by Futsal, and he's in the United States now, uh, taking the time to talk to us. So if you have any questions while we um, broadcasting, um, please uh, just click on the comments there and, and send us. We'll try and do our best to, to answer them. And if we finish then there's some that not answered, I think Marcelo and I uh, would be very happy to, to answer that after it ends. <laughs> all right how is the sound is it good uh, say something else let's see can you hear me well now yeah there's no echo now so that good. fixed it so awesome. the better guys just um if you can click on that little thumb up or the heart button there i think it got better so we're slowly um starting to build numbers there for the viewers marcella so Let's continue our chat. So we're talking about the the programs that you um, developed there, and in is it West Sacramento? Hopefully, I got it right. Yes. <laughs> and um, so, and obviously that started, as you said, that started with the idea of writing a book and making um, a contribution for for the sport and for the country. And I just wanted to to know, like. You had the, the avenue, you had the, the opportunity to, to film some of the sessions and, and then obviously you have a channel on YouTube, which we'll, we'll um, talk about it um, later on. But how, how did it all um, work out for you in terms of, as in, were you uh, recording those videos as you were writing the book or one thing came first, one, the other thing came after? How, how did you... Did you go on on the social media aspect and in the, <coughs> to the book and if you can talk us through a little bit? Yeah, I guess in, in order to answer your question better, I guess I got to go back a little bit in time then. Mm -hmm. You know, like once I came back from Italy, you know, I grew up in Brazil playing both sports, soccer and futsal, went to Italy, I was playing futsal there and then came to America to coach college. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I step in America to coach college and I see all the qualities that American players have, specialists in terms of, you know, dedication, strength, agility, speed. But there were things that were obviously missing there, especially in terms of movement of the ball, capacity to read some scenarios, capacity to change the direction of a run or recycle a movement or make some kinds of connections of, you know, small group tactics. Mm. So... As I started to coach college, I was like, okay, how can I develop those things in, in the players? So during eight years at St. Francis University, I kept finding different ways to insert all those things for the futsal background that were not well developed in the players that I had. Mm -hmm. So during a long time, I was trying to figure out, you know, okay, 
how do I make them understand to move this defender this way and make a counter movement there? Or when you move, someone else comes there. I can go into more into details when I show video about it. But anyway, so during all those years, I was finding those different ways to try to make my team and players better by using futsal strategies. So as I was doing this, I was writing some articles about, I was getting content together. Mm-hmm. And lots of people would come and ask me, you know, how can futsal help? Or how can we implement this from futsal on the soccer field? And every time, like, I would spend hours trying to explain the entire story and how I was trying to do something. Yet, it sounded to me there was a kind of broken knowledge. You know, like, I'm talking about one specific thing. If you really want to understand everything that futsal can give to a soccer player, it's a very broad concept. You can look at it at many different points of view. Mm-hmm. We can talk about from the little kids, we can talk about the high level, anything in between. So those ideas were in my mind day and night for years to the <laughs> point to say, you know what, I need to write this book. I, I, I need to put everything together, not just have articles or exercise, but organize the entire methodology to try to, to make this transfer between the sports better. Mm-hmm. So answering the question now, I did write the book first, even for copyright purposes. So I wrote the book, I sent the government, I got the copyrights. And then I knew that even if I really liked the book, I was not going to have any success unless if people could easily see the transfer between those sports. So I need to find a way to capture the attention of people so they could understand kind of the guidelines of what I was trying to propose. Mm-hmm. And then when you get the interest about that, then maybe someone goes to buy the book. And indeed, it has been working well. Um, so I start by writing the book, start to make some animations or videos cutting out professional footage of futsal and soccer and showing. I guess it should be showing us. What do you think? Is it talking about this? Yes, uh, let's let's do it. So. Um, OK, let's see. So I'm going to keep talking as I'm getting there. Yes, please do. Um, so a first step in Soccer Power by Futsal, I use those videos. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. We, we OK, can so let's go Instagram here. And let's see if I'm good enough to talk and handle <laughs> both things. <laughs> Multitask. So, yeah. So I start to create this channel here. Let me know if I'm doing something wrong between the images, OK? That's OK. I'm so first showing. Go ahead. Like things like this, I'm gonna be showing right now. You know how to create space in soccer using like the futsal concepts, like we're saying in Portuguese, the dalgat, the check out. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I did was cut out like many different um, videos showing professional footage in both sports. Yes. So the same way you have this, I have like many different videos just in the area of creating space without the ball. So how the futsal environment can help a player develop qualities that very often you don't see even professional soccer players doing those things. So like here you're showing the takeoff, meaning players get off without the ball to create a second movement, create a line of passing. Okay. Mm-hmm. So for a while I did those videos and I got a really good response from people all, from many different places like liking those videos. And then the next thing was try to put together training, um, not just professional footage, but doing this part here, futsal and football integrated training. So at this point, I start to, sh- no, you know, like last year, I started to film with my teams, explaining a concept on the sock on the futsal court, then the same concept, like in a six v six. Here, if I remember, it was an eight v eight environment. And then as applying like in a showcase. Wow. So the same concept that you apply on the, on the futsal court, pressure, close the diagonal, double teaming, is exactly the same on the soccer field. But it's going to be really hard, hard for you to find some people seeing this. And many parents and players that are playing futsal think futsal is just about putting your foot over the ball and kick if you're tiptoes. <laughs> and that's no wrong, but that's less than... of what the futsal can bring to the soccer field. 
Mm. So that was this the last step I did in terms of videos. I will stop a little bit so it's not just me, but I can keep going with this. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, for example, I'm sorry. Futsal rotations apply to soccer. Okay, so if you have your players, uh, where is that part? Uh, I was looking for this. Give me one second. I need to figure out what that one is. So in this video, if you really want to give a good idea of the entire method, in this video, I go over everything. Understanding soccer, power futsal. It's a seven-minute mm -hmm. video. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be explaining the entire thing. Like Even like, let's say the parallel and the diagonal. Um, let me ask you this point now. Do you have opportunities like with your teams to teach those movements? Do you guys get to those levels? We do, we do actually, but mostly in the in the futsal environment, we don't, um, we never, we've never thought of doing and using those concepts here with the with the outdoor teams. Good, but you know, even if you actually not gonna do those movements with your teams, okay, on the soccer field, it's important for the players, for all the players, you know, in your club, to understand that all those things that they are doing on the futsal court can be applied on the soccer field. The That's logic right. behind those movements are not specific of futsal. The mm -hmm. logic behind those movements are part of the concepts of team sports. Mm -hmm. So you wanna penetrate, so you wanna find a way, can be a block, can be whatever, to find about your target. You might need to move a ball or make a movement off the ball to create that space. So basically everything that you're doing in the futsal court can be applied on the soccer field. So here, like in this video right now, you did the par you learned the parallel, you learned the diagonal. At the end of the day, what your players are learning, you know, it's to change the direction. Look at this. He goes for one side, change direction, go to another side, and then we find the ball in the air. That was my team was playing Italy. And now you see Barcelona, same thing. Very subtle, quick movement. The players make two steps inside, and then he steps outside and creates a space. Mm -hmm. Or you can see a target moving the ball to the side and find space to shoot. So basically, all those concepts that you're learning on the, the futsal court can be applied on the soccer field. That is excellent, Marcelo. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it and for explaining it so well and demonstrating it. I think as, as, you, as you mentioned before, um, you, you had the concept, you have the, the methodology, but if you hadn't done what you've been been doing with the videos and showing and explaining and demonstrating, it would probably it would probably be harder to to get the message through to the people there, <laughs> isn't it? That, that's the crazy part about it. In Brazil, basically everyone starts with futsal. You know, like let's talk about the big names. Like let's see what gets the most attention. Let's talk about Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Neymar, Robinho, Felipe Coutinho. They all grew up playing in futsal, right? They basically haven't touched a soccer ball if you were like 12 or 13 years old. Still, in many countries, they don't understand that it might be better than just be on the soccer field in those ages. So people say those things, you know, quick thinking, uh, faster pace, step with, uh, on, on the ball with your foot, tiptoes, but it's much, much, much more than that. There's a reason why those guys became who they became. And it was not just because he tiptoes the ball once in a while. Sure, that helps. Yeah. But all those principles that I was showing before are all the things that you can develop very well on the futsal court. The environment of the futsal court helps you to create constraints, to create problems that players have to solve. And for consequence, develop their tactical capacity of reading the game individually or in small groups and their technical skills because the solutions that they're going to find are going to require technical skills and those skills can be transferred to the soccer field exactly and and i don't know what you um what, what you face there with when you try and, and push uh, that idea that uh, method of training but you know obviously we we face the same situation here in australia when we when we talk about that um, using, you know, that you get people saying all kinds of different crazy things like, 
you know, it's going to hurt your knee. Uh, futsal is just doing freestyle tricks, um, kicking with your toes, you know, learning to use the sole of your foot. And then it's a complete different sport. And then it's just so, so much that we hear here that we sometimes <laughs> it's hard to, to digest. But um, what you're doing there and what caught my attention, Marcelo, when I first um, heard you talking about it was um, out of the blue, how we call it here. Uh, I just, I was just simply searching for, um, I mentioned it to you the other day privately, searching for a, a futsal podcast. And then uh, I found Keith to Tozer, uh, who apparently is a legend there in the US. Um, and then the first, the first episode that was available for me to, to listen to, I was driving at the time, was there Marcelo Antonelli soccer by soccer part by futsal and I was like okay so I listened to the entire podcast and then that's when I I started to make contact with you um, looked at your YouTube channel and and saw what you showed us there and I think um, a lot of our viewers are um, um, going to to be sharing with us the same the same ideas and and being probably some some will now start to be a bit more amazed after seeing that because it's not uh we've always talked about here a lot in across the country you know uh we've always talked about the technical side of things you know the close control that fast pace the quick thinking the decision making and etc uh but we've never had the, the the to talk the discussion the opportunity to analyze the game in such an in-depth way the way you're doing there with with the arrows the circles the filming the associating the professional game and and etc with you know diagonal balls parallel balls creating space with um, the the check runs and etc so um that was that was really um a, a, a positive insight and, uh, and i'm sure um the our viewers are appreciating that for those who didn't know about your your work or for those who are in Australia here. So thank you for, for sharing it. <laughs> no problem. I mean, at the end of the day, I guess futsal does not cover all the requirements of soccer, hmm. but covers a good part of them. And basically everything you do on the futsal court makes sense to be transferred on the soccer field. So let's give some more examples. Let's forget about the ball now. Let's talk about defense. Mm -hmm. You can use the small scenarios of futsal 5v5 to teach your players how to defend individually with mm -hmm. a high pressing line or just pressing the player of the ball or do a low pressing line you can teach them to do a zonal defending system mm -hmm. you can teach them how to mix from one defensive system to another yes coach but you can do that on the soccer field as well yes you can but it's harder to do it on the soccer field and on the futsal court you can do the earlier age, become more natural for them. Honey, wait. Sorry, my daughter is here. That's okay. Hi, um, <laughs> And uh, so you can do that in a, in a very effective way. And your players are learning it while they're competing in a fun environment. Exactly. So they're not just getting those constants and rolling their eyes because they're bored about listening to that. So exactly. if you go to the soccer field to try to teach it, you know, 11 v 11, you have two players participating and everybody else like, what do I do now? Just listening to this. On the futsal court, in a few seconds, you explain something, you get it going, you make a little game, and then you transport that to a small side of the games and you go to the soccer field. Now, exactly. it's still better if they learn at your earlier ages on the futsal court just in a club like yours. Mm. So if they are in a futsal club, they can be learning, out, learning and applying those concepts from earlier ages and become better players. But Sorry. again, you can train your team to play with a man down, a man up, transitions, defensive transitions, offensive transitions. You want to delay, you want to force to a side, you want to close a pass lane. Basically, any sort of concept you can develop on the futsal court. That is absolutely right. Couldn't agree more, Marcelo. Um, since you touched on that subject, I just wanted to... Um, to hear from you, for example, it's as you, as we mentioned before, it's very common, very common in Brazil for a kid just to grow up playing futsal, and I'm sure it would be the same in Italy and Spain, countries like that. 
Uh, now in Australia, it is not the case. They, they start, you know, playing outdoor soccer, outdoor football very, very young and then don't have that understanding, that knowledge that futsal will be so beneficial for that initial de developmental stages. Um, so I wanted to, to see if it was the same in the US or are they starting to, see, how, how do they see futsal at the moment in the United States? Uh, is it just, uh, uh, futsal, is it just like a, a, a tool to develop soccer players? Do they have a, its own pathway? It's a sport on its own there. How does it go? How does it compare with, with um, countries like Brazil, Italy, Spain, and then obviously Australia? Uh, I think Australia is more similar to the US than the other countries that I mentioned, but, you know, g give us an insight. Yeah, the, the culture of futsal here cannot be compared to Brazil at all. You know, like it's easier to compare Brazil and Spain and Italy. And then in terms of futsal, United States is completely different ballgame. Mm -hmm. okay? There's no competitive culture of futsal professional league or anything like this. Mm -hmm. They see futsal as a tool for development for the great majority of people, okay? Of course, you're going to find some people that love futsal that want to make it happen. But the great majority of people, you think of futsal as a tool for developing soccer players. Mm -hmm. However, like you said, they're going to just see this as a technical thing, meaning you just go to the court and you keep stepping your foot and you overstep, step over, or do lines of passing, A, pass to B, pass to C, pass to D. And then you say, hey, D, you know, check out, check back. But they don't create an environment of training that will make those players better. Mm. So if you know how to use the futsal strategies, you can create the environment that will really make a difference. And that's basically the idea that they have in the book. Let's go back to the scenario of the United States. Mm -hmm. So because of this, most of futsal here in America is like this. You have a soccer club, and then twice a week, you have your training with your soccer team. And once a week, you go with your futsal team. With your you know, on the futsal court with mm -hmm. your own soccer club, and then you do the things I just told you one on one with the ball, one player for ball, or those passing lanes. Now, there are as well some futsal schools, most of those futsal schools are organized and owned by foreigners, you know, people from Brazil or from England or from whatever that have their things here, or some Americans that had a background in futsal and opened those schools. Mm -hmm. Still, the training is completely separated, right? You have futsal training, soccer training. Without players learning those concepts of futsal as part of the logic of a team sport where you're trying to invade someone's area and score a goal. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about futsal here, most of my colleagues, college coaches, because I know most of the Division One college coaches in this country after 12 years, 11 years working there, Mm -hmm. They say, well, yeah, futsal is great, you know, for the little kids. Mm -hmm. Even my colleagues will not understand that well. And uh, yeah, I mean, this process right now of trying to, to change the mentality, and that's why I needed to create this, this YouTube channel. And they're going to keep working on this. And we're creating a course right now. So I had some coaches that saw it and say, hey, we need to create a course based upon your book. So you're working on this right now. So I have a team of very capable coaches and people that are very good with, you know, um, social media, internet resources that are helping me put together an interactive course mm -hmm. to put those, um, those concepts to life in a course format. Now, the fact that Keith Tozer started watching my videos, and he's the number one in futsal here. He was a futsal coach for 20 years, and he's a marketing guy. He's a very American good marketing guy. He knows how to talk about it. He knows how to make things. And if ever he listens to this, I think he's going to laugh because he knows that. So he, he's very good about putting people together and blah, blah, blah. So he knows people all over the world. Um, he knows like the big shots in America, in soccer, in futsal, in the federation. No. And then it was an honor for me to have him getting my book. Eventually, he got my book. I gave him my book when he met. Emilia, but I, and then he was like reading through the book and like, oh, that's what we needed. That's mm. what we need to show people, everything the futsal can give to soccer. Mm. And he's a futsal guy. So with him, that's how you end up meeting me, right? That's how you, you saw the podcast with many different countries. And again, he, he knows everybody here. So he's helping now, you know, 
show all those different ways in futsal can help develop soccer players. Mm. And then you can say, yeah, Mama Marcelo, you don't think a futsal is the only sport? I would say this. There's no culture of futsal here. So Americans are thinking just a futsal is a tool to develop soccer players to get a scholarship to go to college. But if everybody starts to realize how important futsal can be in the development of players, it's going to grow. And we, when it's going to grow, even if it's initially growing as a tool for development, eventually it's going to grow as its own sport as well. Right? The more people that you have playing leagues from early age, so there the more be, likely you're going to have a professional league later. There wouldn't be anything like... A anything close to a professional futsal league there in the US at the moment? They tried to start a couple of times. They call it a semi-pro, mm. but I don't think you can actually call it a semi-pro That's league. Gross. Yeah. It happened the same here too. They had for a few years, uh, they call it the, they, they were calling it the F league. Um, and it was probably same sort of scenario there. They went for uh, a few years and then they had to, to, they stopped. Uh, it's a mystery still, probably money involved and, and politics. Um, and, and then it didn't go ahead ever since. They had some uh, other private organizations um, trying to, to build something towards towards that. But, you know, still um, players would have to, to pay to play pretty much. So they pay for their trip and they pay for their meals and their accommodation. Sometimes they, uh, they get, you know, the club pays some of it or even half of it but there's always a little bit of out-of-pocket expense for the players uh we do have um a viewer here on facebook a great friend of mine vinnie vinicius he's also brazilian and he do, he does the same work that i do here has a futsal um club and he's around 200 case from me here so we, we work in partnership we create um opportunities and things for the for the kids so Hi, Vinny, his, his wife as well, Talita's watching. Hi, Gabby, everyone watching. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'm here today with Marcelo um, Antonelli, the author of uh, Soccer Power by Futsal. He's in the United States. So what time is it in there, Marcelo? Uh, it's between 5 and 6. Like, we start at 5 p.m. here. Yeah. So how much, whatever time we have so in the call. We are, we are in the future. <laughs> yeah, you're one day ahead. We, we are Saturday, 10.46 a.m. here. And uh, Gabby just commented a little bit out of the t out of topic. She, Your daughter's very cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so she said, uh, you're cute. Thank you. Thank you. There, so. there you go. <laughs> She's jumping. Okay. Um, so if, um, if I may, Marcelo, I wanted to, to continue this, this conversation by... Um, uh, talking to you about obviously we we're still going through uh, the current scenario of health the health situation the, the health crisis in 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 the world not just in the U.S. and in here um, numbers are probably a little bit worse in the U.S. than what we have in Australia but I wanted to know um, how did that impact in your plans in your work in your in your life there and you know your plans looking ahead to you know resume stuff and how, how's the situation there for for you guys well it's a tough question right because no one really knows how long it's gonna take for us to come back so i, I definitely don't have the truth about it i don't know what's gonna be the I, I honestly don't know what's gonna happen now personally for me as a person with soccer by futsal i'm using this time to keep developing things so I actually have been writing a lot. I've been writing some models for this course we're developing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, using this time to talk to people from many different countries about this methodology, comparing different methodologies, different ways to see that. I'm not sure if Evandro is still on the call or not, but he, uh, Evandro has a, a project in Brazil called Dois Um Brazil. Mm -hmm. And um, they're developing a way to systematize the training um, thinking about special like youth professional teams, but they also have different ways um, for schools and stuff. So if you're online on Instagram, um, you can write about this a little bit and send your logo. It's called Dois Um Brazil. I'm talking to people in Italy, including the national team coach for futsal. Um, they have a project there. It's called Futsal in Soccer. And they have been going to those big time clubs in Italy, like Juventus, Atalanta, Bologna, 
and they're trying to implement a way uh, to insert futsal in the training of the academies in Italy. Okay. So there's Miguel Rodrigo in Spain trying to do something similar, trying to show people to understand like how futsal can also help develop soccer. So I've been using this time, you know, the best I can do with my time is take care of my daughter and keep, your, you know, I with my clubs, I keep, you know, producing videos for them. I have meetings, have different topics with my teams, of course. So I keep doing my job as a club coach. But the soccer private food style is being a time actually to, we have been developing many connections and we're getting the book in different languages. Mm. So soon we're going to have soccer private food style in Portuguese, in Spanish, in Italian. Yeah. And we're still talking about some, even some other languages. So pretty much, uh, I don't know pretty pretty much you we, didn't we, stop. You didn't stop. You just kept on going online and working on the behind the scenes and all the projects. So, yes. How yeah. about you? Oh, uh, look, as, as same as you mentioned, I, um, I took the opportunity to try and connect a little bit more with my family. So I also have a daughter, she's four. Uh, nice. And I have a um, one-year-old son as well. So there's, there's two there. Yeah. <laughs> they will definitely keep me busy. Yeah. Trying to work um, from home as well. I took the opportunity to... Um, so I've pur purchased a couple of um, books. Um, Yours is next, <laughs> uh, and um, and I did a couple of courses as well, quick courses, not only in in related to futsal and football, but I've also been trying to learn a little bit more about uh, digital marketing, um, trying to you know, sort of work on the on not only on the on my personal brand but on the NC futsal brand as well. Uh, so yeah, so I've been probably looking at a screen a little bit more than usual <laughs> with the social medias and, and et cetera. But yeah, look, uh, I, I, I'm a truly believer that when this is over, when this is finished, I don't want to be just back to normal, back to, to the same routine. I want to be better. I want to be stronger and, and you know, have somehow evolved uh, throughout the process. <laughs> that's the mindset, you know, and that's what you have to do as coaches and try to inspire our players to be doing the same. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's hard for us and sometimes even harder for them, you know, like a young age to face something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's different, something that this generation did not know how to deal with, the same way we don't know. I was just reading about an article like who was born in the 1900. Yeah, they had to face like world wars and, and things that were definitely yeah. harder. Um, I mean, it, everything's relative, right? Because if you lose a relative or a friend in this, this is harder, right? So yeah. it's really hard to compare things. It, it depends how it, it, when it comes to you and affect your own life. Yeah, but yeah I know many players that, um, you know, I hear from the parents, they, they're just home, they're not getting out of the house, they're kind of depressed. So we try to find activities that will engage them. Um, I like to not just be teaching them, but I like to create groups with my team where they have to present something. I get like, trying to keep little pieces of knowledge for them. Uh, hey, why don't we research this and you present for the team? You run a fitness session because yeah. I have U16 players, right? They're not little kids. They're teenagers in high school. So I try to find ways to engage them, not, not just in terms of receiving information, but also create information, find the joy of presenting something. Yes, and uh, Evander is on the is he's on the on, on Instagram. So yeah. whoever is watching from Instagram, dois um Brazil is another research resource for you. You know they follow their Instagram account to follow different ways to integrate the futsal with soccer. Which yes. you know, Renan, the truth is we we both need it because you know in our countries, meaning USA and Australia, people are, I guess are far away from understanding all the possibilities that the futsal can bring to the soccer field. But to be honest, I guess every country is just a limited understanding of all those possibilities. Yeah. Everyone just focus on one little thing and that's what futsal can bring. Yeah. Why I think it's way bigger. Um, yeah, I've, um, I've, I've been here for about 10, almost 11 years, Marcelo. And, and since you know, day one, I've made it my mission to, to continue to, to spread the word to to tell people how you know how good futsal is as we mentioned before as a tool to develop players uh, but also as a sport on its own so I've always worked 
worked closely <laughs> with um, with futsal and and you know and ne never never really stopped up until the the coronavirus situation here. Uh, and even though I've you probably have seen a few of my um, stories on Instagram and Facebook, I've I've managed to within the law still run like private lessons like personal training for football um, in futsal. Awesome. Yeah. So we try and we try and um, do the best we can and spread the word. And like me, there's there's so many other uh, Brazilians and and also even even some Australians that um, understand and love the work that we do. They're helping us spread the word in Australia. So um, hopefully you have you know people that believe the same as you there in the United States that are helping you to to spread the word. <laughs> We are working on it. It's growing, honestly. Um, every day, someone new that comes to me and say, oh, that's cool. I had never thought about it. People that, you know, have a background in futsal. Yeah. Or someone with a background in futsal that says, I always thought about it, mm -hmm. but I had never put that together. So that's great to see that together. Like, I always thought this. I'm going to use this video now to show my players or something. Mm. So it, it's a hard work. Take years and years of work. But I'm not going to complain. I think it's going well. I'm happy how things are going. And I really hope to be able to support, you know, futsal coaches around the globe by giving them, hey, you want to show your parents how this transfer took. The video is there. You know, you can show it to your parents. They will see and maybe your yeah. players will be more motivated to come to next training. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Marcelo, I think uh, we are soon going to be completing our broadcasts, um, especially that Instagram has that um, one hour limit. <laughs> so I just wanted to, 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 to see if you could, if you could give to our viewers and obviously not just the live ones that are, have been with us for, for some time now. And then thank you for that guys. Uh, we really do appreciate it, but this is going to be um, also posted on YouTube for anyone to, to watch it whenever they want. Um, so if you could give a piece of advice to, yeah. to our viewers, uh, what would it be? Yeah. Uh, just before yeah. this, just yeah. saying hi to Be Food yeah. as well, watching here. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, if you're, yeah. Yeah, Emilia, if you're a futsal player or a soccer player, first of all, the passion has to come first. You know, at the end of the day, most people don't become professionals. You got to enjoy the moment. My first advice is don't think too much about the future. Think about what you can do right now mm -hmm. to get better, like you were saying, to keep a positive okay, growth mindset and having fun. You got to have fun in the process. Yes. Um, so I guess that, that's, you know, in terms of soccer, that would be my, my biggest advice. Mm -hmm. um, same for coaches. You know, things change very quickly. One day you think, you, you know, you have it all and then things disappear. Or it can be the opposite way. You might think you're the best coach in the world and no one listens to you. Well, keep, it, keep it working. Keep doing what you can do. And one day you're going to be rewarded for that. You know, opportunities come. The world we live in is very fast. Things change very quickly. So if you keep working, things happen. That is excellent advice. Thank you, Marcelo. Um, now, if uh, people wanted to connect with you and find out more about uh, your work, about Soccer Powered by Futsal, what would be the best ways to contact you? So I have a lot of free stuff. So always the same name, Soccer Powered by Futsal. Every time the same way, all together. There's a Facebook page, mm -hmm. which is going very well. There's people from all over the world. You're going to even meet other people, you know, from over the world that work at Futsal. Uh, the YouTube channel, Soccer Private Futsal on YouTube, Instagram account, Soccer Private Futsal, and the website, guess what? SoccerPowerByFutsal.com. <laughs> and have many articles there as well. And then if you like it all, then the book is, is on sale. You can buy a bit PDF, doesn't matter where you are in the world, uh, on the website. There's a section book, and you can find it there. So using any of those uh, social medias, there's always an option to contact me. I would be more than happy, you know, to discuss, exchange ideas. I don't think my way is the only way, is the only right way. It's just a lot of work that I put together there. And some other people around the world, I'm sure that's great works as well to share. I'd love to exchange ideas to hear your opinion as well. Very good, very good. Um, for those who, if we have any viewers in the US, um, 
I'm not sure if they're watching now or they'll watch later. Uh, or in Brazil, if you wanted to connect with me, it's at Henan Fenerick, uh, Facebook page, Instagram, and YouTube. So Henan Fenerick uh, is the way. Uh, go on social media, give us a subscribe, a like, and a follow. Show, 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 show it again, Marcelo. Yeah, but you're talking about you. Talk about your club. Show yours first. Can you show yours first. <laughs> I don't have. You I have don't it? have a book. I haven't written a book yet. But, no, but um, your club. You have the symbol <laughs> besides you there. What is it? Is a is a ball bag that you have so, on your left? Yeah, that's uh, like a, a boot bag kind of thing. So that's a uh, relatively new logo there. We haven't had it for very long, but. Um, NC Futsal is, um, uh, that's where I'm the head coach. I'm in New South Wales, the state here in, in Australia on the North Coast region. Um, so that's how you can connect with us guys. Uh, I think uh, I can speak for everyone, for Marcelo and I, when I say thank you for those watching on both platforms, Instagram and Facebook. And soon this will be on YouTube as well. Uh, and a very, very special thanks to you, Marcelo, for so promptly uh, accepting the invitation and, and, and helping us um, spread the word and, and talk about what we love. Thank you so much, Marcelo. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Say hi to Alex Matias, great, big friend uh, watching this as well. Let's stay in touch. Uh, let's keep talking, keep exchanging ideas. Let's keep moving on in this process. Definitely. Thank you again. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, Marcelo. Sounds good. Take care. Thanks for the Bye opportunity. Bye-bye.